you know, look, there's this big debate going on right now between, you know, our Marvel movies cinema, are they not? Uh, recently, Martin Scorsese, one of my favorite directors, said that Marvel movies are not cinema, you know, and that they're just amusement park rides. And yeah, there's maybe some truth to that. And everyone has their opinion, which is, hey, I, I respect that. I had a similar opinion, actually, when I was in high school, probably getting out of high school, like, you know, a lot of times in high school, I go through this thing of like, I watch the Marvel movie in theaters for the first, I like it the first time I see it. And then I think about it more and more and then I don't like it, you know, and that would happen repeatedly. Uh, my friend Jacob can vouch for that. And there's certain Marvel movies I was like, I just didn't even give them a chance. I didn't even watch it. I just judged it by the way it looked or the trailer or whatever. But there's no denying that right now Marvel movies are making tons of money. And that was another thing I've always gone back and forth, like, you know, I want to see artistic movies. I want to see movie pu movies push the boundaries, like you were saying. I want to see avant-garde. I want to see art house movies. I want to see dark movies that aren't afraid to be edgy and take risks. And I still love movies like that um, as a filmmaker, too. I think me being a filmmaker has made me love movies like that compared to general audiences, which is our stereotype as people who like, you know, Marvel movies, I guess. And I'm not trying to say everyone's like that. I'm just saying that's my experience. And seeing Marvel movies in the new light, my, you know, a, long, a lot of time in the past, I, and recently, you know, like probably five or so years ago, I'd, you know, be more critical of Marvel movies. Like, uh, like it's just the same thing over and over again. They're not even taking risks. And now I'm, trying to give them a, a new chance and maybe it's this, just this new debate that's brought this to mind and maybe I'm even getting burned out on art house and independent dark movies maybe I'm just getting burned out just because I've seen so many and I've studied so many so I ordered a whole bunch of, one, of them on blu-ray ones that I'd sold years years ago because I didn't have any interest anymore and now I've had this newfound interest where I want to kind of study them in this new light and see them as more of a entertainment kind of and and also just see, do they bring any value? Is there anything there? Is there any art house elements that they're trying to do that I didn't see before? You know, so like when you go watch a Marvel movie, you you can sometimes almost predict what's going to happen. It's very predictable. It's very known to the viewer. It's not going to take you on a journey where people, actors are not going to be talking and they're just going to do sign language. You know, you, you're not going to expect that. It's not going to it's not going to be a movie that's going to push the, the boundary of what's capable in, in, in movies. Like it's not going to be anything avant garde. Um, it might it might create a brand and a culture of of what what it means to be in Marvel movies. But I think that that in itself, you just how you said at the beginning, it, it does make a lot of money. But does making a lot of money mean it's the best movie. The money plays a role in whether they take creative risks or not. Whether yeah, those creative risks but, are good or bad. Some of the best movies I've seen are independent movies or just movies no one really has heard of or movies that maybe aren't, aren't as popular as Marvel movies. A lot of David Lynch movies like Eraserhead I just find to be pushing the limit to the limit, like past the limit. And it's just like nothing I've ever seen. So, And I, I happen to like stuff like that. I understand why some people don't like it. You know, because they want structure, they want predictability. And Marvel movies, like we've been saying, they have structure and predictability because they follow a certain formula for hero movies, right? Yeah. However, I will counter that because I will say that there are certain Marvel movies, I think, that stand out as exceptions. Take Avengers Infinity War, for example. That was a, one of the few super movies that I know of that the villain actually wins at the end. You know, he snap, Thanos snaps his fingers and half of the Avengers disappear into ashes. And I remember audiences when I was watching were like shocked. They're like, because that's never happened. Yeah. <laughs> but then, of course, there's a part two, and then the, the heroes win, right? But so it kind of undoes it. But at the same time, when you take that by itself, it's like, okay, they're really pushing the boundaries here. You know? The Spider Man movies recently. Like, no, you know, all the, all the, all the, all the, the, tw the, the, the leaks and all the, the, the marketing things that they did to build up yeah, that, was, that was good to, to the movie i mean that that was very smart from their part yes it's going to be a a, a a very mainstream movie but i think you learn from that but i also think that some super movies have avant-garde elements i don't know if i would go 100 percent and say they're avant-garde but like for example the batman movie the new one with robert pattinson um and paul dano as riddler 
I feel like there's certain scenes and elements in that movie that are kind of avant-garde and pushing it in avant-garde and like they're they're doing things that you wouldn't expect in a superhero movie and they're also just doing trying to do new innovative things with film and so there's certain I can't think of specific examples right now but I think that movie there are definitely some scenes like that and I think in like the dark knight for example uh Christopher Nolan pushes the limit on not having any CGI as much as possible and he's a more of an independent minded filmmaker and so you can kind of see that in his Batman movie yeah so I think there's some super movies that definitely try to push. It's just they're not they're not very common, you know. They're rare. Yeah. The majority- and, I, and I guess like the the main idea is like, what do you what do what do you want to be known for? Well, what is this movie gonna add to to the masses of out of all the other movies that we put up out there? How is this gonna add to 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 the story to the to the to the legacy of Marvel? If you look at movies um, when, when they started, it was so slow. The storyline oh, yeah. is very slow. You know, you look yeah, at, so. um, what's it called? Um, <laughs> it yeah. was Charlie Brown. You look at a Charlie Brown, the, the Christmas. Yeah. And it's just so slow. Oh, you know, it's, it's just like almost tiring because our, our attention span has it, yeah. increased it, so uh, much. Yeah, David Lynch, the director, said in the interview that, you know, movies are so fast now that you, you can hardly even keep up. And he said it happens so fast now that you can't even immerse yourself into the film as much, you know. And, and you know, he was from a different time, of course, right? Um, it's just, I'm, I agree with him to start, you know, for, especially for certain movies. Like, they're just, you can't even hardly immerse yourself in it because everything, the shots are so fast and everything. Um but I also think we focus so much on the negative parts of Marvel as critics, film critics, that sometimes are filmmakers too, um, that we forget about all the po- some of the positives, you know, or some of the strengths maybe. And to me, the strengths, I think a lot of people could maybe agree, not every movie, but that it's impressive how many VFX shots and CGI and special effects they can pull off in these movies. Like they, I feel like, if there's an area where they push the boundary, that's probably where it is. Now I'm not saying they have the best. I'm not saying all of them have the best CGI on earth. Some of them actually do though. Like to me, a lot of some of the CGI in like Endgame was impressive, and the technical aspects are impressive. And the fact, another thing that's impressive is how they're able to have so many characters in one movie. The event, yeah. if you remember, was so popular when it first came out. It was a breakthrough in film on its own because that was the first time in history in any film that you had separate independent film trilogies combining characters from those film trilogies into one film that had never happened in the history of film before. Yeah. And you, now you fast forward and now we're at Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. And now you have like 20 characters from like different in, in, like own like solo movies. Right. And so that's led to new things. And now no way home taking characters like this Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man from completely different, uh, yeah like generations and so i feel like there are breakthroughs and positive things with that with that part of it you know that we have to kind of go wow that's kind of impressive you know yeah i mean it's the aspect of collaboration